Welcome to the cave. The scientist, she is on the cusp of a great discovery for all of humankind, and a hundred million lives hang in the balance. Oh, the adventurer. She is hot on the trail of her lost companions and unequaled ancient treasure, but not necessarily in that order. The twins, they just want to go outside and play. What could be more innocent than that? Ah, the monk. He seeks his master so he can become the master. It's a journey filled with peace and enlightenment. And murder. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, what of the adventurer? She and her partners are on the cusp of the greatest archaeological find of her career. But the priceless sarcophagus she seeks may never make it out of that pyramid. And neither may her companions. But at this point in our story, that should surprise no one. Could it be? The others gave up all thought of your return. Only I held out hope. The sarcophagus is near. Soon we shall share in the glory of our discovery. Just between you and me, I don't think share is in her vocabulary. Neither is ultra crepidarian. But a lot of people don't know that one. It's not as ubiquitous as sarcophagus. Many believe the Ankh is an ancient Egyptian symbol of life. Some archaeologists would kill to find an example in such pristine condition. Oh, not the adventurer, let me assure you. She reserves such extreme measures for a worthier prize. Those spikes definitely weren't there a moment ago. It seems the adventurer's companions have gotten themselves into a tight spot. Fortunately, they have all these pressure plates to jump on. You know when you're stuck in an ancient curse-ridden death trap, it usually helps to jump on everything you can. Also screaming. Screaming helps. The situation becomes ever more perilous for our two entombed friends. Those spikes are getting awfully close. Do you think the adventurer knows? Actually, I think the real question is, does she care? In case you're wondering, that was a rhetorical question. Ah, the lost sarcophagus of the Pharaoh Taharka. Ooh, great misfortune is said to fall on those who disturb his slumber. You know, locusts, boils, peanut allergies, that sort of thing. Ooh, impressive. The adventurer does know how to get out of a tight spot, but the rest of her escape may not be so clean. Splendid! You've liberated the sarcophagus from its ancient vestibule. Give me a moment to disable these blasted spikes. An Englishman would never add this many spikes. It's unseemly. Many spikes for my taste. Huh. No doubt that was entirely accidental. Alas, now the adventurer herself is trapped. And without the sarcophagus, her former collaborator, or her current lucky companions, I fear the situation is hopeless. Oh, I wasn't planning on wrapping up her tale so soon. But I may have little choice in the matter. So our band of three pulled together. I couldn't devise a better team building exercise myself. There was a bit of collateral damage at the end, but let's call it a win. I feel a caution is in order, for we are about to enter a very grim part of our journey this evening. Grim not because of the atrocity we are about to witness, but because of who is going to commit it. I speak of those darling children, the twins. Watch, but don't be afraid to avert your eyes, especially if you yourself are a parent and you enjoy making soup. <laughs> a beautiful house in the cultural heart of Victorian London. Two loving and caring parents. What could children want more? Apparently what they desire most is freedom. Freedom from bedtimes and chores. Freedom to run wild with no one to hold them back. We're about to see what happens when two adorable children snap. 
<laughs> Terribly sorry, loves. I can't let you go out and play with your friends until you've had your supper. Your mum's making your favorite. <laughs> Sausage and tater soup. Quiet down! You don't want to disturb the dear twins. Sounds like the nice little doggy of yours is famished. Would you two be dears and go fetch him his dog food? Well, the twins have the run of the house now. <laughs> what kind of mischief will they get into next? Look, I don't want to stereotype here, but has there ever been a set of twins that weren't evil? We have now reached the grimmest part of our grim story, for that small box shoved into the corner is the ticket out of this house for the twins. Let's watch, shall we? <laughs> if you dare. Rat poison. <laughs> you know, if one were to examine this box of rat poison carefully, the instructions would read, one small thimbleful added to food will cause intense, horrifying, and excruciating death. Side effects include tingling, blurred vision, occasional dryness of the mouth, and getting to go outside and play. Almost ready. Please, stop your barking. You know how much the twins hate that barking. Soup is ready and it smells delightfully delicious. Why don't you two darlings go wash up for dinner? Don't take too long, or we might start without you. <laughs> Doing as they're told? <laughs> the twins might be turning over a new leaf. <sighs> you see, this is why I never had kids. Well, that and being a cave with no real form of reproduction. But that's beside the point. The point is... The twins, well, I don't know if there is a point to their madness, but they may find their newfound freedom comes at a cost greater than they're capable of imagining. And as with the rest of our travelers, and perhaps even you, I guess only time will tell. Shall we continue our journey? It's been so enlightening thus far. Ooh, I can't wait to see what happens next. I know what you're thinking. I've tried to keep the cave a nuclear-free zone, but I don't have control over the darkness that lurks in the hearts of those who venture down here. Worry not. Someone would have to do something pretty stupid and careless to launch that thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying any of this. Whew, clearly this is a dead end. We might be spared nuclear Armageddon simply because someone forgot to put in a door. Let's hope laziness and apathy take over, and they leave the way they came in. Props where props are due. Like most vending machines, that one was protected by a 256-bit RSA symmetric key algorithm. The scientist has certainly built up some elite hacking skills, which, as I'm sure we're all about to find out, are not always used for good. Well, there's not much we can do now but sit back and watch the fireworks. And by fireworks, I mean a near instantaneous release of energy from a high-speed nuclear chain reaction of highly enriched weapons-grade uranium. System override. Lower blast door is now open. So, she got that blast door open without causing wanton havoc and senseless destruction after all. I might have misjudged her. Missile launch systems engaged. Missile boosters engaged. Insert warhead to commence launch. Insert guidance system to commence launch. Hmm, I fear nuclear missiles are like potato chips to her. She can't launch just one. Coolant stable at minus 14 Celsius. Oh my, they're not doing what it looks like they're doing, are they? They can't know what they're really about to do here. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Yeah, I read that somewhere. Seems appropriate. Launch key engaged. All systems go. Launch in T minus five, four, three, 
Booster harness decoupled. One. Nuclear missile launch commenced. Estimated death toll is 100 million, with an error margin of 2 million. Please wash hands after launching missile. What we just witnessed may seem like horrific and pointless destruction, but if you step back and take in the big picture, you will surely see that the lives of a hundred million people pale in comparison to being able to spelunk a little further. <laughs> hmm, what's done is done. We are now approaching the misty, snow-capped peaks the monk desires to call home a sequestered haven of austerity and mental rigor, where entire lives are spent in the pursuit of becoming one with the world. Of course, our telekinetically inclined friend is not quite so ambitious. He'll be happy enough simply being the one in charge, no matter what it takes. Welcome, young apprentice. You have come far, yet your mind is not at peace. To achieve enlightenment, you must pass the four trials of Zenness. Take this and begin your journey. Do not let your opinion of yourself grow too great. Remember this always. A single feather outweighs all mankind. Isaac Newton was down here once. I'm pretty sure he would call that scientifically inaccurate. That was quite a climb just to grab a feather and turn right back around. I think it's a Zen thing. You know, the journey to enlightenment is more arduous than any mountain path. That sort of crap. Mountain paths are still pretty arduous though. Our enlightenment seeking trio has completed the first trial of Zenness which I'm fairly confident is not actually a word. I'm a bit behind the technological curve down here. You know, no spell check. The monk has completed the second trial of Zenness. He seems to be tackling these challenges in good faith and the proper spirit of calm. Of course, still waters run deep and very, very dark. Our deepest desires can seem so real, so crucial, can't they? But in the end, just like everything else, their glimmer fades. Surely the most worthwhile goal is acceptance of one's place in the universe. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I think these Zen guys are rubbing off on me. Well, that's all four trials. Enjoy the fruits of enlightenment. Remember this, apprentice. Your worst enemy cannot harm you as much as your own unguarded thoughts. All worldly pursuits have but one inevitable end. Destruction. I see you understand what it is to be at peace with yourself. But be warned, a true Zen master is also at peace with the world. This is going to hurt! I don't think that's the orthodox method for obtaining this particular position in the temple. But what do I know? I never passed comparative religion. Do you suppose the monk's companions knew what he was up to? Do you suppose he himself knew? Or was he acting out the only path he had? I have my own thoughts on the matter. And I've had more than a few millennia to weigh it over. But I'll let you reach your own conclusions. Our friend the monk's tale is nearly at an end.